of a champ Cause I am that funny when I profess my dreams People fell back ah. They all thought I was crazy, crazy. What crack you smoking? I think your vision's hazy. hazy Girl, you must have fell above your head Did your mama drop you as a child? I think you lost your mind Nah, ain't no loose screws here You talking to a woman that moves with no fear I wanted something different so I did something different I saw it, believed it, spoke to God and achieved it yeah, this for every train ride that I ever had to cry to see my dreams thrive. So you want to get in the mix of God, God's plan. Yeah. Well, bless your heart, honey, good luck with that. With if that. it's one thing I know, can't nobody stop my back. Because what's meant for me, best believe I have. Don't ever let people tell you what you can do. do. Everything you need is already within you. you. Look to God who's alive, he makes things new. No. The blessings falling down, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it, reach up and grab it. Don't ever let people tell you what you can do. do. Everything you need is already to God who's alive, he makes things new. The blessings falling down, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Don't ever let people tell you what you can do. Everything you need is already within you. Look to God who's alive, he makes things new. The blessings falling down, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Don't ever let people tell you what you can do. Everything you need is already within you. Look to God who's alive, he makes things new. The blessings falling down, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it.
All I see is blessings, got no time for stressing. Don't believe in failures in my life, it's only lessons. They just making room for what I'm on now. I don't got a clue, but I know the one who does know how. Oh, wow. It's like I'm learning the game with the maker I already know now. Destiny has my name, no, it's coming, it'll never go. I know that we all gonna be alright. We gon' make it through if it takes us all night. No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. Our way, our way. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. I can't say the light's been perfect Or complain cause life's been worth it And all because of who he is is working Only working out for my God And no more living in that fear No more tears and no, all, no Oh, he's working me and molding me Who he wants me to be I know that we all gonna be alright We gon' make it through if it takes us all night No matter what the odds may bring our way I can see the blessings coming our way, yeah, yeah, yeah Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way, our way, our way Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way I can see the blessings, I can feel your presence Leaning on the change in my heart for your endeavors I pray I'm your reflection, I fiend for your correction The cross brought the connection and through Jesus is perfection Life done hit me crazy, been more stressed than ever Living like whatever, through the rain I feel you drawing closer Lord make me better, I take me, shape me, use me, I am yours Take me, break me, for the glory of the Lord Okay, not only does he hold me when I'm down and feel I'm folding He my coach when I'm the goalie, never lonely Got that hope in he who holy, holy, holy Keep that rugged cross all on me Need that spirit to control me Seek that word to come and mold me, yeah, yeah. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way Yeah It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way Try not.
seek the living among the dead. He is not here, but is risen. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man will be handed over to sinful men. Be crucified.
you open up your mouth and you praise him, he inhabits the praises of his people. Open your mouth if you believe he shows up when you praise him. I said he shows up when you praise him. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is alive. Open up your mouth like you know he Can you lift up a shout of praise in this room on this Resurrection Sunday? Can you lift your praise if you know that there's nobody like our God? Something happens when you praise. Come on, can you just lift those hands up and open up your mouth? Say hallelujah. Can you say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus? You didn't have to do it, but you did. There should be a fire in the hands of praise, 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 consume me, consume every part because you know the God, the God is make his presence
Cause God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. If you believe it, say, God will do what he will stand. He will. Come on, one more time, louder. Say, God will. God. from glory many things you were on earth a holy king a carpenter you are the living word also
on, somebody open up your mouth and worship the risen Savior. His name is Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Major boy, put on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are, you are the living word, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Oh, Major Boy, put on a tree. You died just to save a little girl like me. You are, you are, you are the living word. Who can save like Jesus? Who can heal like Jesus? You are the living word. You are the living word. And so we glorify your name and we bless you and we praise you. And we glorify your name and we bless you and we praise you and we glorify you because there really is nobody like you. And this early Sunday morning, this Sunday Easter morning, our sunrise service, we came to glorify your name. We came to lift you up. We came to magnify you. We came to lift the Savior up. We came to give you glory and praise because we know there really is nobody like you. We can't say it enough. Nobody can heal us like you can heal us, just like nobody can die for us. No one can heal us like you heal us. No one can fix us like you fix us. And so we magnify your name. Thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for another Easter that you've allowed us to see. Thank you that we are the called according to your purpose. Thank you that you have brought us together for just such a moment as this. Thank you that, Lord, we are alive for just such a time as this. Thank you, God, that your hand on us, you are the one that has drawn us because no one can come unless the Spirit has drawn them. And so, God, we know that we are divinely anointed, divinely appointed, divinely chosen, God, to not just hear your word, but to represent your word, to be the body of Christ, to be the called out ones, to be the ecclesia. And so, God, we're not going to let any rocks cry in our place, but God, we came to magnify your holy name and we praise you for the opportunity to be together and hear your word. Now, God, have your way in this service. Now, God, have your way across the world. Now, God, in today's moment, show yourself strong in times like these. We need you, and we need your hand. We need you to lead us and guide us. We need you to be our God and be our guide, even to the very end of the age. And we need you, God, to use us. Use us now as we pray together. Use us now. You said that if we would humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you would hear from heaven and heal our land. So hear our cry, O oh God, attend unto our prayer. From the ends of the earth will we cry out to thee when our hearts are overwhelmed when we don't know what to do, when the money is messed up, when the system is messed up, when the system don't represent the people, when, when things are not like they're supposed, when we don't see the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, we cry out, God, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Use us now as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let's all pray the Lord's Prayer together and all say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Put your hands together and somebody bless the Lord on Easter Sunday morning. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. You can praise him. Let all the people praise him. Let all the people praise his name forevermore. You may be seated. Jesus be a fit. Jesus be a fit. 
wherever I go, wherever I go, I need protection. Lord, I need protection. Around my children, I need protection. Around my family, I need protection. This is my prayer, Lord. I need protection. Every day. Every day. Every day. Anybody need protection along the way? Anybody need Jesus to be a fence all around me? Over my family, over my children, over my money, over my baby. If you need him to be a fence, put your hands together one more time. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We would have a little bit more church, but this is the first service. Hallelujah. So sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're rocking the boat. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We want to welcome every one of you, name by name, person by person, to World of Recovers Christian Church, to our 8 o'clock sunrise service, our version of sunrise service. Although we did get up at sunrise this morning, and we're excited that you worship. Let's, let's continue to worship the Lord with our giving. Can we praise the Lord for the opportunity that we have to give? No, that was weak. Can we praise the Lord for the opportunity that we have to give? If you need an offering envelope, you can simply raise your hand. One of the gatekeepers will come to you quickly and give you an offering envelope. You can also just take a picture of that QR code that's right there on your screen. And, and uh, you can give to the work of the kingdom in that exact same way. It's what an opportunity that we have to give on Easter Sunday when the Lord gave his life. I'm reminded of the passage there in Job chapter number 12. If you're making your check payable to WOCC, you're watching online, come on and give. Give to the work of the kingdom of the Lord in John chapter number 12. It's a familiar passage of scripture. We don't have to even read it, but there's some Greeks who come to see Jesus at the festival and they come to Philip who's from Bethsaida and they say, sir, we would like to see Jesus. People would like to see Jesus. They don't want to just see the church. They want to see Jesus. They don't want to just see tradition. They want to see Jesus. They don't want to just see churchy stuff. They want to see Jesus. Sir, we would like to see Jesus is what they said. He said, listen, uh, there's so much going on, but this is an opportunity. Like to see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. Love to see him. I, 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 we would like to see Jesus. And when they go and tell Jesus, Jesus says, now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. He says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. It's interesting. Jesus didn't say, ooh, let me go out there and see them. Jesus said, we're getting to a place now where the fame of Christ and the power of Christ and so many people are trying to see him. He's just one guy. I know for many of us, it'd be like, yes, oh, uh -huh, yes, I'm, yes, I, here I am. You come to see me. But Jesus realized that, that he didn't start this thing just for it to be about him. He started it to be a seed. And he said, unless a, a kernel of wheat falls and grounds and it dies, it remains and only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. We are the many seeds. Part of what we have to realize is that Easter and the death and resurrection of Christ is also about him reproducing himself in us. It's also about this concept, this idea. Really shouldn't be that difficult to give. Really shouldn't be that difficult to sow. Because unless that kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only that single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So right now, the, the, whatever you have in your hand, whatever you're about to give, as long as you hold it, it just is one thing. But if you sow it, it becomes many things. That multiplication happens as a result of sowing. In essence, Jesus is saying that Easter, the death and resurrection of Christ, is a sowing, reaping picture. Can't come together for Easter and glorify God for the death and resurrection of Christ without understanding that the sowing and resurrection process is a part of what we're supposed to be reminded of. 
and it's true in the kingdom it's true for anybody that's investing it's true for anybody that's thinking about buying some bitcoin or or whatever coin whatever digital coin you're thinking about all right well I, if i have it's ten dollars in the bank as long as it sits there it just remains ten dollars but if i can find a way to sow it into something it will become many ten dollars come on help us holy ghost so the this whole matter of giving a tithe or an offering or sowing into the work of the kingdom of god really shouldn't be that difficult it's practice for the not only is there a power in the sowing in the kingdom but it also exercises a muscle so that when someone comes to you and says, oh my God, I've got an amazing business opportunity for you. And then but it's going to take you, you can't get something for nothing. Can't worship God and it costs you nothing. But you already have that muscle because you're like, oh, I do that all the time. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm going to sow and I'm going to invest and then I'm going to get this back. I do that on a regular basis. Oh, I praise a God I don't see. I worship a Lord I don't see. I holler in church and I don't see. I walk by faith and not by sight. That's what I do for a living. Tell me how it goes because the same muscle that it takes for me to sow into the kingdom is the same muscle that it takes for me to sow in anything. Oh, I need a witness in the building. Can't just eat your seed. You've got to sow it. The Bible promises seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Let's not just be eaters. Let's be sowers. Amen. Let's give to the work of the kingdom of God. And when it comes time for us to give, it shouldn't be that difficult because we all ought to have a sowing muscle. We all, ought, we all of us ought to have a muscle to just sow and just give. And it produces many seeds and the battle is for the seed the battles for the seed that's the fight that's the wrestle when I was a kid my dad loved mangoes mangoes was his favorite fruit but mangoes are expensive my dad felt like mangoes wasn't for little kids anything that was expensive wasn't for kids He'd be like, it's not for you. Lobster, not for little kids. Briars ice cream, not for kids. Store ice cream, you can have all of that, but that Briars will make you sick. It's too rich for your system. Apples, you can have all the apples you want, but mangoes, mangoes are too complicated for your system. You won't be able to eat a mango. It'll make you sick. So he ate the mango, but he would give us the seed. And we would get to... We, would, we wanted such a taste of the mango that we fought for the seed and the strings are closest to the seed and we would have strings in our teeth because we, we just wanted the seed of the fruit. E even if we couldn't get the fruit, we just wanted the seed of it and we fought just to get the seed. I don't know about you, but I'm not just fighting for the fruit. I'm fighting for the seed. I wish I had a witness that I'm fighting for the seed. Oh, I'm fighting for the seed. You want to be a sower, not just an eater. Because when you sow, it multiplies. Come on, let's pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we have to give. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to sow. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to give tithes and offerings and to operate this muscle. Thank you for your death and your resurrection. And God, as we're about to give and worship just a little bit and then jump into the word in this sunrise service god i pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven god i pray that faith would come alive in your people like never before god i pray that hope would come alive like never before god i pray that love would come alive like never before that we'd have faith in what you're going to do in us that we'd have hope that things are going to get better that we'd love you with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind with all of our strength and that we would then love our neighbor as we love ourselves and as a result of that action would take place and that we would 
not just eat, but that we would sow. Have your way in us, God. Don't just transform your church. Transform your church. <laughs> transform the people. Don't just transform the building. Transform your people. God, take out of us our stony heart and give us that heart of flesh. Be a fence around us. And then, God, plant things in us that will grow and make us to be like you and we'll praise you for what you do and say you're worthy in Jesus name we all sit together God bless you as you give as the bucket passes you jump on your feet for just a second we'll worship the Lord for a minute and I'll share a word with you praise the Lord is anybody blessed this morning we're blessed in the city we're blessed in the field come on can you clap those hands this morning come on let's do it together hey. Everybody say My name, person, my person, the world of Recomers Christian Church to our 8 o'clock Sunday morning service, Easter Sunday morning. Thank you all for coming to this early morning service. I, I asked everybody that saved to come to the early service so that we can leave the second service for the altar call. We got plenty of space in the front. I asked the saved folk, y'all must be saved. To get up at 6, y'all must be saved. I know when my alarm went off at 6, I said the devil is a liar. But y'all are saved. I want to thank Thank you for coming. Thank you. And if you're if you're a heathen, thank you even more. You really must love Jesus or your mama or somebody or your girlfriend or somebody. And we're excited that you're with us. We trust you sense the presence of the Lord. And I'm glad that you're with us. If it's your first time online, you could just write in the comments, say, yep, yeah, it's my first time. Somebody will say something. If it's your first time in the room, on the way out. Now, when we leave service, we need you to get out of here. You ain't got to stay home, but you can't stay here, no. But as you're leaving in the lobby, just run by. They'll just, first time, they'll toss you something. No, we'll, we'll have time. We'll be good. And, uh, and, and, and we'll just appreciate you for coming. And we're a young church, and we're 21. God has given us this vision, balanced victory for the God-designed life. And what that simply means is that we want the power and the, and the presence of God in your life. 
and uh, and we know there are so many places where you could go to worship on Easter Sunday morning. So many ministries you could tune into around the world. The fact that you're with us, we're honored. And uh, we invite you to come again and again and again and be at home and relax and be comfortable. And my daddy used to say, kick your shoes off if your feet don't smell too bad. Anyway, you just, just be at home. We're glad that you're with us. We trust you since his presence. I trust you're ready to hear a word from the Lord. I do have a word for you. How many have a Bible or an iPad or device? Throw something above your head. Wave something at me really quick. All right, let's look at the word of God together. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter number 24. And uh, I have a message from the Lord for you today. So glad that I have a message. So glad that you're all here to hear with us, saith the Lord. And uh, if you could just jump on your feet with me for just a moment. It's become our custom to stand for the reading of the Word of God. And so we're going to do that real quick. Let's look at the Word of God together. Luke chapter number 24. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. Awesome. Luke 24. Let's begin reading in verse number 1. Let's jump into it. It's on your screens even around the world. On Luke 24, verse 1 says, On the very first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleam like lightning, angels, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, crucified, and on the third day be raised again. When then they remembered his words. Verse 11 says, then they came back from the tomb, the women. They all, they told all these things to the eleven. And to all the others, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and others that were with them who told this to the disciples. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself, what had happened? And Hebrews chapter 10, just, just a couple of verses. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 says, And, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. We belong to those who believe, who have faith, and are saved. The title of my message this morning is, This is Us. This is us. Bow your head. Let me pray for now. Lord, I pray that you'll speak, Lord, just now. Some wonderful truth that you'd have for us to see in these next 30 minutes or so. God, have your way in us. Kingdom of God, come in us. Will of God be done in us. Open our eyes. We want to see. Open our ears. Open our hearts and transform us. And we'll praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said together. We all said together, amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. This is us. This is us. If I could draw your attention to verse 39 of Hebrews chapter 10 that says, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. We belong to those who believe and are saved. Happy Easter. When I was a kid, one of the things I remember about Easter, besides just Easter Sunday morning service and all of it, was after Easter service was over, we had Easter dinner. The Easter meal was a big deal. I don't know how many of you are planning on having some kind of Easter meal today, but Easter dinner was as big as Easter Sunday. It was the meal that you were going to have. I want you to imagine that you went to Easter dinner, whether it was your mama or your grandmama or your daddy or your uncles or whoever made the Easter meal. Imagine if you sat down to eat that meal with them and when you pointed to the chicken, your mama said, yeah, that chicken's good. 
But oh my God, what I went through to make that chicken. Let me tell you, I had to go down to the store to get it, and I had to, and I had to stand here and fry it, and my feet are hurting, and oh my goodness, and all the pain, and oh, yeah, them greens look good, but oh, I had to wash them greens. I had to get the grits out them greens. I had to, oh man, I had to go to three stores to get them greens. Yeah, them biscuits are good, but man, I tell you, I had to make them biscuits. I had to roll them biscuits. I had to pack them things. Y'all don't, don't even know what all I had to go through to make that meal for you. I mean, it's good, but I'm going to tell you right now, it wasn't easy. Or imagine on Mother's Day, it's Easter, but imagine on Mother's Day, if you sat down around with your mom and you gave her a card, Happy Mother's Day, and as you gave her a card, she opened it up and said, Oh, thank you very much, Andy. Now, let me tell you about how your birth was. You was 10 pounds, 11 ounces. My back hurt. See this vein right here? I got that from you. It, I think that sometimes on Easter... We can focus so much on the death and resurrection of Christ, the pain, the challenge. I know I saw the, 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 the Gibson movie, Passion of the Christ, and I saw it one time. <laughs> and and, and I, I saw it on whatever Netflix the other day, and I was like, am I going to watch it? And sometimes I think we focus so much on the death and the pain, and the difficulty, and the challenge, and the resurrection. And I wonder if that's really what the Lord wants. I wonder if we're so focused on what it took to make the meal that we don't even enjoy the meal. It's possible to talk so much about the chicken that people will be like, well, that, if that's what you went through, let's just put it in the freezer and let's just save it and we'll just bring it out to look at it in a way that can almost be our relationship if we lose sight of the fact that all of this, he did it for you. All of this, he did it for us. This meal of salvation was made for us. It wasn't made just to talk about how hard it was to make it. I wonder if the Lord was here, if he might say, yeah, I mean, okay, right, but what was I supposed to say? Save me from this hour? No, it was for this very moment that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. I'm not saying it was easy to die. I'm not saying it was easy to be whipped. I'm not saying it was easy to be crucified. But he did it for us. And I wonder if the reason why we do that and why the church went in that way and why we have a tendency to go in that direction is because this is us. And sometimes... It's almost easier to just focus on the Christ part of it and the resurrection part of it so that we don't have to focus on the us part of it because the us part of it ain't nice for all of you right now who are a little bit nervous about what's up here and you just I mean I know half of you are just glad they didn't carry me out in this thing right here my moms and everything else and my mother's I have multiple my mother said not mm -mm, never again but I, I know you're, you're you're a little bit nervous about it because this is us from the cradle to the grave this is us and there is a messiness in this thing there is a path from this to this that we don't like to talk about. We celebrate this way more than we celebrate this because this is the reality of us. This is who we are. All of us right now, as I'm standing in between, all of us, this is where you at some point or on this spectrum right here, 
Some of us are here. Come on. Some of us are here. 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 Some of us is here. And we don't really like to face the reality that this is actually us. And I want us in the story, in the sermons, in the moments to find us in it. I went to a comedy thing the other day. It was a comedy club. I was with some friends. And one of the things that happens if you go to a good one is good comedians know how to make you laugh at yourself. And you're laughing and you're like, oh my God, this is me. Oh my God. Or you point to your friend. That's you. That's you. This is me. This is me. This is exactly how we are. We are like that. We are scared of dogs. We are scared to go. We are scared to go. We don't go outside. We don't get in the water. We do only fly southwest. That we, we go to the beach, but we don't get in the water. Maybe our feet. We are able to acknowledge this is us. Hebrews 10 says, this is who we are. This is who we are. We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed. We are of those who believe and are saved. The passage takes a minute to help us to identify us so that in the presence and presentation of God in the determination to prove who God is, in the determination to prove who Christ is, in the determination to give you the commandments and to give you the promises that you don't lose sight of you in the story. Because this is us. <laughs> when I look at the story, this is you. This is me. I see us in the story so obviously and I'll show it to you and I'll let you go because I'm running out of time here. I'll put, put that timer up there so I can see it. So, so, so because this is us. I mean, it's Luke 24. It's, it's Easter Sunday morning. We have, we, we have seen this story and read this story a thousand times. I've been preaching for 40 years, so I've preached for, I done preached this sermon of, I don't know how many times I've preached on Easter. And when I look at Luke 24 right now, I see us. I mean, it's Easter. It's Sunday morning. It's why we worship on the first day of the week because very early on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, these women go to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. The angel asks them a question. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? But I'm sorry... This is us. They're going to the tomb with spices. Even after all the time they've spent with Jesus, even after all the miracles they've seen, <laughs> even after all of the things he's done, after he's raised other people from the dead that they saw, even though he told them, I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to raise from the dead on the third day, yet and still, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they're going there looking for a dead body. What they're actually doing is very traditional. It was traditional to take spices to a tomb to anoint it because, in a sense, what you were trying to do was you were trying to cover up death with fragrance. For some of us, this is what we do on Easter. Easter is the Sunday where we do the traditional religious thing. We come here, we break open some kind of alabaster box, whether it's your time, 
whether it's your worship, I hope you praise God some, whether it's a tithe or an offering, in a sense, if we're not careful, this will just be us, and we are just in the practice of going to a dead thing, a dead religion, a dead stuff. So do we actually have an expectation of the Messiah? Do we actually have an expectation of resurrection? No, it's Easter. We put on our Easter suit and we say our Easter piece and we go to church and we're determined to break something holy to cover up the stench of death that is our reality. Figure if I pour enough on it, then I can cover the fact that it ain't right. I can cover the fact that it don't smell right. I can cover the fact that there's humanity in it. I can cover the fact that really I didn't sleep last night. I can cover the fact that really I'm not happy with this person sitting next to me. I can cover the fact that actually I want to kill this teenager over here. If I just pour enough of a fragrance on it, I can cover death with smell. Ain't nothing worse than just throwing deodorant and cologne over funky body. Everybody in here, body will stink long enough. That if you think about it, even the idea of going to anoint a dead body with a fragrance to try to hide the reality of decay. But beloved, this is us. This is what we do. We broke, but act like we got money. We act like we got something we don't have. If we don't have hair, we put it in. If we don't have butt cheeks, we put butt cheeks. You can buy butt cheeks. It's my next purchase. If you don't have butt, you can buy some. You, we want to cover death with a fragrance. Sorry, this is us. Women go to the tomb, they don't go there looking for Jesus to be resurrected. They're going there looking for his dead body. It's the right thing to do, but it's misguided. This is us. The angel says to them, why are you here prepared for a dead thing when something's alive? Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? How long will you waver between two opinions? Either God is God, either he is real, either he is the resurrected Messiah, either he is the Christ, or this is a waste of time. Now you spent three years with him. I... When I think about it, I, I'd like to think that if I was there, I'd have been sure he was alive. But I, everybody else that was there did not. Easter Sunday morning, beloved, nobody expected Jesus to be resurrected from the dead. Part of the reason why is because prophecy and miracles have a tendency to be erased from memory by tragedy. Now they'd have walked with Jesus. They have seen miracles. They have seen him do all kinds of stuff. But the tragedy of his betrayal, the tragedy of his death, him being scourged, the tragedy of seeing him hung on a tree, crucified and hung on a cross, and I know you think on a hill far away, but it went on a hill far away. They used to stay, they, they crucified people along the road because the crucifixion was supposed to be a warning to everybody. It's actually very unique that they would even allow the body of Jesus to come down for Joseph of Arimathea to go and plead for the body of Jesus and for them to be able to take him down and put him in a tomb is actually a very unique thing because the practice was to leave the body there and let the birds and the scavengers, the whole point of the crucifixion was not just killing you, but it was desecrating your actual body. 
because a person's body was extremely important to them. They, they felt like even their body crossed over. If you've ever seen it, put coins on your eyes. And the idea was to not let you return to the earth. And so to be able to take his body down and put it in a tomb was special. Because when they first heard he was going to be crucified, I'm sure they were thinking they're going to have to walk past the body of Jesus for the next couple of weeks as vultures and stuff came and picked away at your body. That's what crucifixion really was. And the tragedy of that moment erased from their memory the prophecy and the miracles he did. Sorry, baby, this is us. We're so quiet in this 8 o'clock service. This is us. We'll hear prophecies. Come on. We have, we have stories. All of us can look back and think of what the Lord has done for us and how far he brought us. And uh, But let a tragedy happen. Let something difficult happen. Let something tough take place. Let them find something. And we, for whatever reason, all that God has done for us has a tendency to be very easily erased by one tragic event. We get laid off and all hell done broke loose. We, we can get laid off and go right back to the world. We can try this church thing, try this Jesus thing for a little while. Let bad enough stuff happen. We'll be right back in the club. Bottle for, we, if, if we're not careful, there's something about our humanity where no matter what God has done for us, let the bad enough thing happen and we go back to being heathens. We'll be saved till somebody cross us the right way. Then we'll put our salvation down. Whoop somebody's and then put it back on. It is absolutely possible for enough of a difficulty to make you lose your salvation. I wish I could get a witness in the 8 o'clock service. Maybe I got some honest believers in here. Maybe in the 8 o'clock we don't want to admit it. But let the right somebody step on something. Let the right somebody do something. Let the right somebody do something to your baby. Let, let it happen. And we'll see how saved you are. You don't know how saved you are until somebody tests it. And if you're like me, your salvation is getting tested. Every day. Not every, every, every day. My, my salvation got tested yesterday. Get on a plane. I'm trying to put my stuff up. And the thing, and the man behind me, is such a, he's in such a rush. He's pushing up on me. He got a little attitude. I'm in first class anyway because, you know. And as I was putting stuff up, he, he, and he looked at me, he looked me, he looked me up and down hard like he was going to do something. And there was a voice that said, do something. No, no, I didn't say that. But I wanted to be like, oh, you look like you're about to do, you better bring it. Anyway, what I'm saying is, it's amazing. This is us. There's a fear that Christianity will make us hated and hunted. Come on, we got to find us in here. These disciples went from laying hands on people to hiding behind closed doors. But this is us. We kind of halfway scared to tell somebody we say. We kind of halfway scared to tell somebody our faith. We kind of halfway scared to tell somebody what's going on with us. They will absolutely tell us what they're doing. They know who they are. They know their pronouns. They know what group they are. They know what part they belong to. They will tell you this is us. But we, for whatever reason, have gotten shy about this Jesus thing. Come on, keep on going. The third thing that happens that I see that this is us is, sorry, gentlemen, and I know, but women's sight Doubted by men. I thought I'd get a little bit more amen on that one. Women's sight doubted by men. That the first people that saw Jesus resurrected was women. The first people that saw the angels was women. The women go to the tomb to anoint the body and he's not there. 
they have the encounter with the angels. Peter and them didn't have no encounter with the angels. Mary and Joanna and Mary the mother James and others that were with them, they were the ones who had the encounter with Jesus and with Jesus and with the angel. Because the first person that Jesus appeared to was Mary. The first person who saw the resurrected Christ was a woman. Oh, gentlemen, I know it's kind of hard because then when the women go back to tell the disciples, the disciples don't believe them because, gentlemen, sometimes we don't believe everything women say. Sound like nonsense to me. Y'all are just emotional. Y'all was close to Jesus like that. Y'all love Jesus like that. Y'all are seeing something. Thomas was like, whatever, girl, unless I put my hand in the holes myself. Y'all, I love y'all. Y'all make a good chicken, but y'all are tripping. Ain't no way. Jesus, the Bible says that the disciples did not believe them. They go to the 11, the apostles. You can make an argument that with the way that, that the Lord deals with women in the scriptures and appears to women, whether we're talking about the women caught in adultery, whether we're talking about women at the well, whether we're talking Jesus' interaction with women is actually quite significant. You could make an argument that women really should have been the ones leading the church, but men have a tendency to not let women be in the just go ahead. I don't know why. I know I'm supposed to be a, a man's church preacher. I'm supposed to be a man's man. But, but I, I will have to admit, we sure do doubt what they say. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Uh huh. No. Uh huh. This is us. This is us. This is us. Number four. Well, this is us. Wrestling with faith. It's us. <laughs> sometimes faith wins. Sometimes fear wins. It's us. We look at, I look at the Easter story. I look at Easter Sunday morning. I see us. Sometimes we believers. Sometimes we're doubters. I prayed all the time, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Because unbelief is constantly warring against belief. And in this story, there is no faith. There's only doubt. They go and tell the 11, the 11 don't believe. Later in Luke 24, you read it on your own, Jesus has to actually appear to them. He appears. When he shows up, they say, it's a ghost. The 11 say it's a ghost. Jesus has to eat food in front of them to prove to them that he's alive. Beloved, this is us. We are constantly trying to get God to prove his reality to us. There are many of us to this moment, in this particular moment, we right now have a line that we need God to cross to show us that he's real. We have faith at times, but sometimes we get to a place where we're like, yeah, but I need, if I don't get this job, if I don't get this thing, if this healing don't, if this don't happen, if this don't take place, I'm going to tell you right now, I need God to move. I'm going to need something to happen. I need him to show himself strong. Lord, you're going to have to show up for me. Lord, you're going to have to show me something. And because as much as we holler, as much as we shout, as much as we praise, as much as we hallelujah, Sometimes doubt takes over. Come on, 8 o'clock, talk to me. Sometimes in the midnight hour, the demons come and talk to you. Demons love to come talking at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. 
I know I'm not the only one. I'm a pastor, so I know if he's talking to me, he's talking to you. You get up to go to the bathroom, and when you lay back down, he just try to slip right in right at that moment and start telling you everything that ain't going to happen and how you ain't going to do it and how that ain't going to happen and bring all the worries of your whole life and day and every single thing that stresses you out in that moment to try to keep you awake. The devil is a liar. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus, but you find yourself, come on, you find yourself in that moment wrestling with your doubts. You can only feel but so good about your salvation considering how much doubt you wrestle with. I never look down on anybody who has doubts. I'm like, doubts, please. I am well acquainted with doubt <laughs> because you can't have faith without doubt talking loud. This is us. We're in this story. And the biggest struggle for all of us on the way from the cradle to the grave. And it's the point of Easter. It's the point of all of it. Is to see that as a door. He conquered death so that that would not scare us the way that it scares us. We think of this as the thing that brings life, but if we could ever really get it together, we would understand that this is actually a door to a life that we don't now have, that we don't now see, that death is not the end. Death, where is your sting? grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he conquered death so that this won't scare us the way it scares us so that we will actually realize that I can't pass to better without at times going through a death situation so for all of us who are dealing with something that is terrifying, I don't know who that is besides just me, but all of us who are facing the end of our career or the end of our career at this or the end of our time at that company or the end of this relationship or the end of this thing or the end of life, for all of us, we have to understand no ending is really an ending as long as you've got the Lord in your life. It don't matter what anybody's trying to do to you. It don't matter how anybody's trying to say to you. It don't matter how much the devil rolls that at you. You'll be like, oh, you mean to tell me that there's a resurrection that God has, right? You're, what you're saying to me is God's got something better for me. What you're saying is that God's really got a plan. What? They stole my car. That car is dead. Well, guess what? Even if it's dead, yet shall it live because I know Christ in my life. And death is a door. Oh, beloved, can we admit that's hard? This is us seeing this as a door to greater. Seeing this as an opportunity for something to take place that we don't now know. Understanding that there's a mystery on the other side of this that we don't now see. It's to walk by faith and not by sight. And what we really want to do is just avoid it as best we can. We scared half the death of this trying to take vitamins and supplements and Botox injections and fighting off wrinkles and dying hair. I'm right there with y'all. Somebody said, you done cut your beard off. What happened? I said, I was tired. I thought it was going to be salt and pepper, but it was salt and salt and salt and salt and salt. And so I had to get rid of it. Devil is a liar. I'm young. 
My knee hurt, but I'm young. My back is sore, but I'm young. I don't sleep so great. But why? Because we are so determined. Right, Elder? We do not want nothing to do with death. But I came to tell somebody, death is not the end. Death is just the beginning of a whole nother life. If we could just simply embrace this. The Bible says that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. And whatever it is that you're facing right now that seems like the end is not the end. Death is a door. This is us. This is us. We mourn death because it's hard for us to acknowledge that death is not the end. It's just the start of something amazing. This is us. The greatest call for us is to walk by faith and not by sight. Have confidence in knowing that God is in control. The constant faith in knowing that what it looks like is not what it is. To lift your eyes above the things that you see in the natural, oh, help us, Jesus, and to focus on the unseen things the world, the system, the media constantly bombards us with death because fear sells our dollar about to fall apart the banks about to collapse Th this is about to happen both presidents don't know nothing Biden's a puppet Trump's got a new hair stop <laughs> just to get us to get our eyes off of what our real source is. Oh, beloved. Oh, I need a witness in the building. Oh, beloved. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know in whom I believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able. And I know that no matter what death you bring to me, there's resurrection on the other side of it. Can I get a witness in the building? I said, can I get a witness in the building? This is us. It is the power of Christ in us. The hope of glory. Bow your head when we pray for now. Lord, I pray that you would remind us of us. Any of us who want to act like we are worthy we're so unworthy of all of your blessings give us a clean heart we'll follow you we're so unworthy lord we're so unworthy we think we got this because of prayer we think we got this because of faith lord when we really look at us and think about us lord you've done so much for us in spite of us without faith it's impossible to please you so we've come together, we gather together to walk by faith and not by sight and to believe that death is not the end. To believe that what's coming is greater than what's been. To believe that there's something else on the other side. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you for the resurrection of Christ. But Lord, in that story, remind us of who we are in you. We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed. We are of those who believe and are saved. Make us believers. Make us believers. Fill us full of God, we could ask you to fix every problem, but, but the victory is the faith. Give us faith. Give us grace. As the labors increase. And we'll praise you for what you do, what 
you say you're worthy in Jesus' name. We all sit together. If you heard a word from the Lord, put your hands together and bless him. Come on, bless him if you heard a word from the Lord. Beloved, in that faith, can I get you to give again? Can I get you to give a building fund offering now? We're talking about death is not the end. One of the things that's a part of being a part of a good church, I know you gave your tithe, but a part of being a good, a part of a, of a church is that you're establishing something that will outlive your time. If you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand. That, that, or you can take a picture of that QR code, Victory Park. It's the building that we're about to break ground on. A part of how we have everlasting life is that we don't just spend these moments just eating and just spending on ourselves, but that we establish something that we get to look at after we're gone. On our way out, we're able to say, yes, I gave, I sowed, I made a pledge, and I gave to this thing that's going to impact people for generations after I'm here. One of the significant challenges to me today, being a church leader and a pioneer, whatever it is I'm supposed to be, is I'm almost at times galled by the fact that we don't really get a chance to really take advantage of the generational wealth of the church. For me to have to start a church from scratch and get buildings and lease spaces and build something all over, considering how many years the church has been going. But this is the call on us, beloved, for us to sow, for us to give to the church. Can I get you to give this building fund offering and to dig down deep? It's Easter. I need you to give the best offering you can. We are close, 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 close to very close breaking ground and we're just we just have a small humps to get over but what we're doing victory park is the space we're going to we don't own this space this is lease space and and, uh, and it is we've got 26 acres that's maybe two miles from here and we're about to get going on it and a part of what it is is that we get an opportunity to live longer than we live what folks do who are smarter than us. They leave endowments. They leave an inheritance for their children's children's children. They even put the church in their will when they die. We can't get no amens in the 8 o'clock service. They decide that death is not the end. Can't take it with you. Death is not the end. It's something we almost don't talk about enough. This makes us nervous. We got to get over that. Don't care how much kale you eat, you're going to die one day. And you want to be prepared. You want to live in trust. You want to sit down with somebody to talk about your end of times. You got to get it together. And a part of it is I'm giving to the kingdom, I'm sowing into the kingdom, I'm sowing to this building fund project when we get into that new space I want us to be able to say look what we did we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed we are of those who believe and we're saved amen let's give amen let's give let's bow our heads and pray God thank you for this opportunity that we have to give in the room and around the world to so to give a building fund offering World Overcomers hasn't always done this, but for the last couple of years, God, we've been giving a building fund offering as we've been sowing into the Victory Park and sowing into this building and, and all that it's going to do, what it's going to do to the community. And God, we've shared the vision so much and we're going to share it again. But God, I pray that you take this offering and multiply it supernaturally to the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we all sit together. God bless you as you give. As the bucket passes you, just jump on your feet and we're about to let you go. It's 9.30. The next service is going to start at 10.15. I'm calling an audible. It's supposed to start at 10, but it's going to start at 10.15. That's 45 minutes. Give you enough time to, to leave and for the new, for the second group to come in. 
this this story of us or this is us is a new series that I'm starting and so for the next several weeks I'm going to be talking about us and really who we us with because if you found yourself in there and I do most of the time it's because of who we're ussing with and who we belong to so we're going to be talking about who we us with and who we fellowship with us and who we connect with and with that in mind gentlemen our next men's ministry event we're having a man-made tailgate event it's happening on saturday the fourth gentlemen mark it down saturday the fourth that first saturday in may may 4th saturday we're going to be coming together it's just going to be a great big tailgating barbecue type event it's going to be on land that the church owns uh, we'll be talking more about it, but I wanted to give everybody just a heads up, gentlemen. This man-made tailgate event is going to happen on, on May 4th, Saturday. It's going to happen in the day. And uh, we want you to register online and reserve your spot today. But we're going to have us a time together and talk about what God is doing on us, in us as men. Amen. Come on, let's pray. God, thank you for this opportunity we have to come and share and praise and pray and worship. And thank you for Easter and now dismiss us from this place but never from your presence as we leave, as we go home, as folks watching around the world turn off and, and, and as they go on with their meals and their dinners and their time, God, I pray that your glory would be revealed even in those moments. Thank you for living in us. Thank you for giving us revelation and insight. Thank you for the choir singing and the anointing and the worship. Thank you for all these people that gathered for this 8 o'clock. Now, God, have your way in the tent. Save somebody. And we'll praise you for what you do. God, as we always pray, bless your people. Make your face shine upon your people. Be gracious to your people. Give them peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit until we come back together again. In Jesus' name, we all sit together. Amen. God bless you. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Give somebody a holy hug. You are dismissed. God bless you. family, we just finished our 8 a.m. sunrise, our version of sunrise service here, and we hope that you have enjoyed yourself. We hope that you enjoyed the worship. We hope that you enjoyed the atmosphere that you have been just exhibiting and just having a, a chance to just get a part of at home. Listen, wherever you're watching from, let us know in the chat, whether you're watching from Durham, Raleigh, Cary, Mooresville, or even if you're not even in the state of North Carolina, we want to know where exactly it is that you're watching from. So let us know in the chat. If you're watching from Bedside Baptist, that's okay. If you're watching from Pillow Presbyterian, that's all right. If you're watching from Mattress Methodist, that's okay too. But let us know where you're watching from because you are a part of our virtual family. You are a part of the Easter experience here at World Overcomers. And we just had an amazing time. And listen, you still have a time. You still have a chance because although the 8 a.m. service is over, we still have the 10 a.m. service. And guess what? We're going to push it back to 1015 because you see all these people who are exiting the building right now. Guess what? We have a slew of people that are coming in right now to be a part of the Easter experience at World Overcomers. And guess what? It is second to none. We still have room for you. We have parking spots available. The cafe is open. And guess what? For the 10 a.m. service, the children's ministry space is going to be open. So you can bring those kids with you and drop them off with Pastor Alberto and the volunteers at O Kids and enjoy the Easter service. Enjoy as we celebrate together the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. And make sure that you invite somebody. Share this video. Like this video. Tell somebody about Easter at World Overcomers. Tell somebody about what we got going on here. Okay. Guess what? It's Easter. So we got the Easter bunny here and we have... A duck. We have a duck here. This is a duck, right? A peep. Okay. It's a peep. Come on, y'all get in the camera. Come on, come on. Look out, listen. We got, we got the whole squad here at Easter at Whatever Comers. Listen, this is just what we do. So listen, they're going to be here for your kids if, you want, if they want to take pictures with them. But also the adults, if you want to take pictures with them as well, we have that. We have different photo booth stations here. 
you just do not want to miss the Easter experience, all the fun that we're having here, all the treats that we're going to give away, all the different stuff, the activities at World Overcomers, it is truly second to none. So make sure you tell somebody, if you're watching this right now, kids, wake up your parents, tell them to get dressed, and tell them to bring you to World Overcomers, 2933 South Miami Boulevard in Durham, North Carolina. Hurry up. Because although the people are leaving right now, the 10 o'clock crowd is coming in swiftly. So you want to make sure that you get here, make sure that you invite somebody, and make sure that you're in the building. Although this stream, although this avenue of watching virtually is a beautiful thing, and we thank God for it, especially if you're not in the area. But if you are in the area, you have to be in the building. You have to experience it because the worship that we just experienced in there. The, the song list that we just went through, all the different Fred Hammond songs that we just did, listen, that worship almost had me in tears. I was brought back to the days of driving with my dad and driving my uncle. All those Radical for Christ songs, let the praise begin. When the Spirit of the Lord, all those different songs just spoke to my heart. So make sure that you come in the building so you can experience that too. And I think we have one of the choir members who sang Jesus Be a Fence during a special song. And she's going to come over here and tell us her favorite experience about worship. Now, I know you saying Jesus be a fence. And I want y'all to know, this is Alexa. She's one of my young adults in the young adult ministry. Say what's up, Alexa. Hey, everybody. So, Alexa, tell us your favorite part, even if it's not today, but leading up to this Easter experience. What, what has it been like? Because you've been behind the scenes to see what it's like. Tell us a little bit about it. It's been so fun preparing for Easter Sunday. Um, every Saturday we've had choir rehearsal. Meeting everybody in the choir has been so nice. Um, but yeah, just praise and worship this morning was great. And we're about to do it again at 10 a.m. And it's just always a great time with everybody here. Now listen, I want y'all to hold Alexa to something that I told her. I told her that in the 8 a.m. service, since she's in the choir, she needs to be front and center, you know, representing the young adults. Whoa, young adults. She didn't do it this time because she thought she got away by wearing these tall heels knowing that they put her in the back. But for the 10 a.m. service, she's going to make her way to the front even if she has to, you know, part the, a sea of people to get up there. Isn't that right, Alexa? Yeah, I'm going to get in the front. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Alexa. No Y'all put some hand clap emojis, some fire emojis for Alexa in the chat. Let her know that she's loved. So listen, you have to be here in the building. But before you go, before you mosey out your house and those who are watching because you watch the 8 a.m. stream, we just want to give you a couple of announcements to keep in front of you of everything that's going on at World Overcomers because we are about to be in the month of April starting tomorrow. And there's a lot of different things that we have going on. The first thing that we have going on is next Sunday, April 7th at 9 a.m., we are having growth track classes again. For those who want to strengthen their faith and deepen their well of spiritual understanding, we are going to have growth track classes here at World Overcomers next Sunday at 9 a.m. Also, April the 3rd through the 24th at 7 p.m., we are going to have premarital counseling classes. So for those who are getting ready to tie the knot, those who think they want to take that relationship to the next level, or those who just want to see, you know, what is premarital counseling? I never understood what that is, or I want to get a better understanding of it. Guess what? Word of Overcomers, we got you covered. For the next couple of Wednesdays, starting this Wednesday, April the 3rd, we are having premarital classes. So make sure you tell somebody who's engaged. Make sure you tell somebody who's dating. Let's figure this out before we even tie the knot. Come and do the premarital classes here at Word of Overcomers. Also, there's going to be a prime time fellowship learning today's technology on April the 6th at 11 a.m. There's going to be an estate planning here at Ward of Overcomers on April 20th at 10 a.m. Listen, we got to make sure our affairs are in order. So make sure that you are here at the estate planning seminar at Ward of Overcomers on April 20th. Single ladies, make some noise. Single ladies, put something in the chat. Get a hand clap emojis or the dancing lady emojis, something. Put it in the chat for all the single ladies because there's going to be a single ladies brunch held on April the 20th at 1130 a.m. So you want to make sure you call all your single girlfriends, all your single sisters, all your single cousins, whoever, and let them know about the single ladies brunch here at Ward Overcomers. There's also going to be a new members class on April the 21st at 1230 p.m. Right after our 10 a.m. service, there's going to be a new members class. So if you join the church previously within the last 90 days, if you join the church today, if you give your life to Christ and say, you know what? 
Word of Overcomers is a pretty cool church. This is a church that I want to be a part of. Guess what? We're going to have a new members class. We're going to make the we're going to make it plain for you how you can become a member, what we believe as a church, and how you can get involved and start becoming a overcomer in the world and in your life. And then the young adults, because I am Pastor John, I am the young adults pastor. Got to shout out my crew. We are going to have a hike. We're going on a hike. We're about to get outside. Hopefully this pollen is going to die down. If not, take your Benadryl, take your Zyrtec, take whatever you need to take because we're going on a hike on April the 27th at 9 a.m. early in the morning. So you can go to our website, worldovercomers.church, get all the different information about everything that we have going on here at World Overcomers. You don't want to miss it. You, don't, you want to get involved. You want to share this video. You want to like this video. You want to comment. You want to tell somebody, and you want to get in the room. Now, listen, 10 a.m. service, I know, although we push it back to 1015, we are almost 30 minutes away from it. So get dressed, brush your teeth, wash your face, put some deodorant on, throw some clothes. Even if it's not your Sunday best, we don't care. We want you here with your heart. We want you here in the building. We want you to hear with your family, with your Word Overcomers family, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Because although he got up and there's resurrection for him, we believe there's also resurrection for you. We want you in the building. We want you in the room. We want you to experience the difference that is Word of Overcomers. Now, I didn't tell y'all to go get dressed. It's the second service, so I got to go put on my second outfit. So we love y'all, and we'll see y'all soon for the 10 a.m. service. Peace.